SpaceX is pushing hard to launch the second spaceflight of its Starship rocket this week. A few days after being reunited with Booster 9, Ship 25 was destacked on Monday. It's now standing next to Super Heavy B9 with crew lifts nearby. While we were out having a good time, Starship has gone through a lot, but still hasn't been able to fly into space. However, now we have official news from SpaceX. After a period of radio silence, SpaceX has announced that Starship is set to take flight as early as November 17th pending final regulatory approval. Stay tuned as we dive into this, and more in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St Excitement is building and the countdown is underway for what could be a milestone moment. SpaceX is getting ready for the big day of Starship, Ship 25's second flight test. They're making final repairs to the thermal protection system. On the other hand, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA's Air Traffic Control, ATC, Current Operations Plan Advisory, now shows details about the space launch activity's closure. The closure is scheduled for November 17th, 18th, or 19th. From 0 to 100 hours to 1,400 hours, lasting 14 hours each day. A temporary flight restriction has been published from November 17th from the surface up to unlimited. The notice to Airmen, Nodham, for the U.S. airspace related to Starship's second flight test is now available. The launch date shifted from November 7th to the 17th. The first possible launch opportunity is on November 17th, with the window opening at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Elon Musk, through his X account, confirmed that he's been informed about the approval for the launch, expecting to happen in time for a Friday launch. The Mexican Nodham has also been updated to reflect the new launch date. SpaceX recently shared an interesting video showcasing various moments related to Starship's development. The video takes us through key events, offering insights into the progress and challenges faced by SpaceX. The video starts by revisiting Starship's first flight, which ended in a spectacular fireball. Despite the setbacks, SpaceX learned valuable lessons that influenced the design of Ship 25 and Booster 9. The footage then shifts to Booster 9's journey from a static fire test to its rollout and lift onto the launch mount. Notably, Booster 9 undergoes a thrust vector control test showcasing its new electric TVC system. A significant moment captured as the Water Deluge System's first full pressure test on July 28, 2023, revealing control room monitors and the tank farm. A visit to the rocket garden displays various boosters and ships dated between August 6 and 16. 2023. A Cybertruck towing Raptor number 305 on October 4, 2023 is also showcased. Breaking the sequence, Ship 25's sixth engine static fire on June 26, 2023 is presented, including new monitor views. The video concludes with Ship 25 and Booster 9's full stack in a wet dress rehearsal on October 24, 2023, building anticipation for Starship's upcoming flight too. A few days ago, the 6th D-stack of Starship S-25 took place, likely the last before IFT-2. Marvin, slightly bothered by the early wake-up, quickly adjusted and headed towards the OLM. Traffic cones were used to block off the orbital side of the LC and the SQDR moved, providing more space for the chopsticks to lower S-25 onto the transport stand. One significant development is the installation of the Flight Termination System, or FTS. Recent sightings of personnel leaving the bunker, where explosive charges are stored, indicate that the FTS soon be in place. This system plays a crucial role in ensuring the safety of both the launch vehicle and the surrounding FTS. In the United States, any missile or space launch vehicle must be equipped with an FTS to safeguard range and flight personnel, as well as nearby populations. The FTS serves as a safety net designed to terminate the flight of the rocket in case of an emergency or a malfunction. If the rocket deviates from its intended trajectory or encounters a malfunction, the FTS activates, ensuring that the rocket and its payload are destroyed, preventing potential harm to people or property. SpaceX, under the leadership of CEO Elon Musk, is on the brink of launching the world's tallest and most potent rocket, the Starship and Super Heavy launch system. Standing at an impressive 400 feet tall and boasting a lift capacity of 165 tons, Starship aims to revolutionize space travel with its full reusability. As expected, 
SpaceX has been working on the TPS or thermal protection system of the Ship 25 prototype, which lost some tiles lately. The TPS will be a very important part of the upcoming flight if Ship 25 completes more than halfway through its journey. Hopefully SpaceX achieves sending it to orbit and back. In fact, the rocket will attempt to fly around the Earth and then drop into the ocean in a major test. The tile is part of Starship's thermal protection system, which is a collection of around 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles on one side of the craft, also known as star bricks. The tiles are capable of withstanding extreme heat of over 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Because stainless steel is already heat-resistant, Starship only has a heat shield on one side for extra protection when it re-enters Earth's atmosphere with the belly flop maneuver at high speed. The tiles are hexagonal to ensure there is no straight path through which hot gas could accelerate through the gaps. Besides repairs on the TPS, Booster 9 and Ship 25 are also thoroughly tested on all components to be ready for its big launch day. The Raptor is a big part that needs special attention there. SpaceX was able to upgrade much on the Raptor after the last flight. The second flight test will debut a hot stage separation system and a new electronic thrust vector control or TVC system for super heavy Raptor engines. In addition to reinforcements to the pad foundation and a water-cooled steel flame deflector among many other enhancements, SpaceX said on its website. And no matter what, the OLM will be responsible for getting this thing off the ground this week. It's one of the OFT-1's biggest problems, so SpaceX needed to be ready for it as well. However, before embarking on its ambitious missions, Starship must prove its readiness for orbital flight. The upcoming test flight, contingent on regulatory approval, holds the key to Starship's immediate future. Elon Musk emphasized the pivotal role of regulatory clearance, stating that the launch's timing hinges on government approval. The launch, if approved, will be a significant milestone for SpaceX, showcasing the capabilities of this colossal rocket. SpaceX envisioned Starship as a versatile, heavy-lift launcher, suitable for a range of missions, including deep space exploration and transporting astronauts to the moon. In fact, NASA has plans to employ Starship for the Artemis III mission, landing astronauts on the lunar surface. However, before these lofty goals can be realized, Starship and its booster must demonstrate their readiness for orbital flights. The Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, has completed. The safety review portion of the Starship and Super Heavy License Evaluation, a crucial step focused on public safety during launch operations. Yet, the FAA has yet to update the license awaiting the completion of an environmental review. This review involves consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, USFWS, to access the environmental impact of Starship's water deluge system at the Boca Chica launch site in Texas. The environmental review process, coupled with regulatory hurdles, has been a source of frustration for SpaceX. Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's vice president for build and flight reliability, expressed the company's readiness for the next flight test, but highlighted the lingering delay in obtaining necessary approvals. He called for an expedited review process, especially for projects of national interest like Starship's role in NASA's Artemis program. The impending Starship's second flight test, if approved, promises to answer critical questions about the rocket's advancements. The test will evaluate the upgrades made to the launch pad, the reliability of the Raptor engines, and the successful separation of the Super Heavy booster from the Starship upper stage within the first three minutes of flight. The outcomes of this test will influence SpaceX's timeline for future activities with Starship. The company aims to launch Starlink Internet satellites, demonstrating in-orbit refueling for moonbound missions, and perfecting the recovery process for Starship's booster and upper stage all essential steps towards achieving full reusability. However, CEO Elon Musk claimed the company will receive its federal launch license in the coming days, the final hurdle before a second attempt. However, he did not specify who informed him of the impending regulatory approval, and SpaceX did not respond when asked for clarification. An FAA spokesperson deferred to SpaceX regarding Musk's social posts, knowing the agency has no updates to share since a statement on 31st of October. The FAA announced last month the completion of the license's safety review, which focuses on protecting the public and property of SpaceX's Starship license. At the time, the environment's review with the FWS or Fish and Wildlife Services was ongoing. 
a request for comment into the FWS's Texas office returned an automatic reply indicating at least some representatives for the office are at a staff retreat through Thursday. What could be going on is that there are a lot of side conversations happening between SpaceX and the FAA, and it could have been discussed that launch operations will be approved soon. So SpaceX is getting as much as it can get done ahead of the approval. Friday was a federal holiday, which means both the FAA and Fish and Wildlife Service personnel were off from work, halting any potential paperwork from being finished. Best case scenario, SpaceX will probably have the license today or tomorrow. If not, on Monday, those workers will be back at their desks, meaning we might just see something announced then or later in the week. Once the FWS finishes its review, we expect the FAA to grant SpaceX another launch per its launch license, as the agency has already finished its safety review and mishap investigation. Into April's failed flight. All notices still show a potential launch date of the 15th of November, which will most likely be updated to the 17th in a future notice to Mariners. If the FAA approves a new launch these days, Friday is very much in the cards for a launch attempt. However, don't be too shocked to see the date slip into the following week due to any number of reasons, like a later approval or technical problems with a rocket or pad. But should the test be successful, some SpaceX filings with regulatory bodies such as the Federal Communications Commission or the FCC indicate that the third Starship flight could take place within months, unless there is again severe damage to the launch facility. At this point, SpaceX has something like five more prototypes of the Starship and at least three of the Super Heavy booster in various stages of construction ranging from complete to mostly complete and more in the pipeline. Each new prototype has significant changes compared to the previous. SpaceX doesn't work like traditional U.S. aerospace contractors, which tend to take many years to build a rocket that is expected to work and be mission-capable the first time it launches. SpaceX instead starts trying to fly things as soon as they are built with the simplest bare bones of prototypes. They test frequently, often to failure, and use the data gained to inform the continuing development process. In addition to developing the Starship and Super Heavy vehicles, SpaceX, at the same time, has also been developing the production methods and facilities to build the vehicles in large volume. They don't plan on building just a few, they plan on building an entire fleet of hundreds. This will depend on the nature of the FAA-approved launch license since the April test flight license limits SpaceX to a single launch only. While Starship is still awaiting its license, other SpaceX workhorses are still hard at work. SpaceX just launched the world's first satellite that can pinpoint carbon emissions from space and it promises to be a game-changer. The satellite, called Vanguard, will be able to detect emissions from individual coal and gas-fired power plants, large oil refineries, steel plants, and other polluting industrial facilities. Vanguard launched on SpaceX's Transporter 9 rideshare mission on Saturday, November 11, together with two new methane monitoring satellites of the GHG-SAT constellation. The Vanguard satellite will orbit Earth at an altitude of 500 kilometers, imaging each spot on the planet every two weeks. Developed by Montreal, Canada-based firm GHG-SAT, the satellite uses a novel instrument invented by the company and previously fine-tuned on its existing fleet of satellites that monitor emissions of methane, which is also in the family of greenhouse gases, which are pretty dangerous. That's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.